Okay, this is 11.1 .1 inverse functions, linear, discrete. So here's a linear function, here's a discrete function. They give you two functions and then they ask you to find all these values. Now, inverse functions are basically two functions that undo each other, okay? So when you put in an endpoint, you end up eventually after both functions, um, the same value as the final output, okay? So um, there's a process to finding that. If you're given a discrete list, all you have to know is that you interchange the x and y values to find the inverse, okay? So, and then for the linear or any other kind of function, anything else other than this okay for just the regular functions if you have f of x or g of x or h of x doesn't matter what letter but if you have a function given um, then you're gonna have to do three steps so one is you change f of x or g of x or h of x whatever it is into y then you interchange x and y just kind of like the same idea up there. And then what you do is you solve for y. And then what you do is you change the y back into the function notation. But because you switch the x's and y's, it's no longer the regular function. Now it's the inverse of that function. Okay. So those are the two different ways to do it here. So if I take G, I can find the inverse just by interchanging all of these X's and Y's. So this becomes negative nine, negative three, two and one, nine and eight, and then negative eight and nine, and then this. So when they ask me, what is G inverse of nine? Remember, this is the input of this function, and they wanna know what is the output. So the input for nine, this is not nine, this is not nine, this one is nine, and this is not nine. So this is the input, the output is the value eight. And so that's going to be the answer there. Okay, so that's how you find the inverse and the value of an inverse um, with a discrete function. Now for the other function, for h of x, we have to follow all of those steps, those four steps. So we have to change this weird um, function notation into y. Then we have to interchange the x and y. So every y will become an x and every x will become a y. And then you solve for y, so I minus three, and then I divide by four. And then you change it back into its inverse notation. And so this is h inverse of x, so they will want you to plug this in, okay? But then they also want you to plug in or find h inverse of h of 1, okay? Now you don't, I mean, you can do the math and I'll show you the math one time. But after that, if you have a function and it's inverse, remember what a function and an inverse does. They undo each other. So whatever the input was, the final output is going to be the exact same. So I already know that the answer to this one is going to be 1. I know it is, just because of the definition of what an inverse is. But if you want to see the algebra of it, we'll do it. So h inverse of h of 1 means to plug in 1 into h. There's my h. So 4 times 1 plus 3 which is 4 plus 3, which is 7, and then plug 7 into the inverse. So we get 7 minus 3 over 4. You get 4 over 4, which is 1. And I already knew I was going to get 1, but if you need to see the math, then you can see the math. Okay? Now let's do the same thing for this second example. Okay? So for here, they tell us G is this and H is this. This is the regular function, this is the discrete function. Okay. So for g inverse of x, it's this 
this one. They want me to find that first. But it's a function, so I have to follow those rules. First, I got to change that to a Y. Then I have to interchange the X and the Ys. And then I have to solve for Y. So first, get rid of the common denominator. And then add over the 13. And now I have y by itself. And then just write it in its inverse notation. So g inverse of x is 5x plus 13. And that's what they want for this first part. You already know that if you have a function and it's inverse, you're just going to get the value that you were inputting. But again, if you need to see the math, here's the math. So plug negative 2 into the inverse first. That means this one. You get negative 10 plus 13, which is 3. And then I plug 3 into G, which is 3 minus 13 over 5, which is negative 10 over 5, which is the negative 2 that we thought we were going to end up getting, right? Then h inverse of negative 1 means we need to go here. But before we can figure that out, we need to find what h inverse looks like. So interchange every single one of these x and y values. Okay. And then now if you're trying to find h inverse of negative 1, you need to find the input that is negative 1. And that happens to be this one. And so what is the output? The output is positive 2. And so that is h inverse of negative 1. Okay. So that is how you work on this topic, inverse functions. Now, whether they be linear functions or discrete.